Yes, I can dig that. Right. No, I was just thinking, I, I don't know if you want to talk about this or not, but you, you procured kind of an interesting guitar a while back. Yeah. Uh, could you talk a little bit about that rascal? You mean this guy? That one right there. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting story with the Matt, you know, the, Oh yeah. So, perfect. So my friend, I, I've, I've met a, a cast of characters working with Crosby, Stills and Nash. Um, you know, there's a lot of history there and a lot of stories that have been told and a lot of untold stories. I'm sure. Right. I'm sure. Um, so as I understand it, this man who's a friend of mine now, I you know, met him through CSN. His name is Tom Hagen. And Tom uh, worked with CSNY during the heyday when they were playing. I think these were some of the first huge... Um, stadium gigs sure. that ever happened and so uh tom was an assistant with the band uh he wasn't necessarily a, a a roadie per se he was someone who was friends and they had their entourage and there were people who would assist in whatever had to be done picking up things or whatever who knows what well on this fateful day it was Neil Young's, as Tom tells me the story, it was Neil Young's birthday. And in the middle of the show, uh, somebody said, hey, folks, it's Neil Young's birthday. And the whole you know, crowd goes nuts. Well, it was also Tom Hagen's birthday. And they, after they announced Neil, someone in the band goes, hey, it's Tom Hagen's birthday, too. And nobody knows who Tom Hagen is, so maybe a few claps or whatever. Neil gets off stage and hands Tom a guitar case. And it was that guitar. It was uh, basically, from my understanding, one of Neil's old black uh, spares. Right, sure. I, I don't really know. I'm trying to find you know, people who were involved who might know more. Uh, there was a guitar roadie named Guillermo who uh, I have, haven't been able to find. Um, anyway, I wanted to try to identify the instrument and I have a very dear friend who's a dentist and a fantastic guitar player named Tony Dio Duarte. And Tony said, well, the black, Neil's original old blackie, as I found out, was a gold top that was painted black that Jimmy Messina owned in Buffalo Springfield. And in those Buffalo Springfield days, Jimmy Messina traded Neil old black for one of Neil's Gretches. Okay. And actually, I, I, I should probably talk to Jimmy about this. But, but anyway, so the original old black that Neil still plays was painted over. And, and I can ask Jimmy if he knows, you know, why or when this gold top was painted over. But the guitar that I have was is black and there's no serial number visible. So my friend, the dentist, Tony said, well, why don't you come in and we'll x-ray ah. the headstock. <laughs> and I have pictures of Tony and his whole, you know, regular regalia. Dentist regalia. And we have the guitar, you know, in the chair and he's like, you know, positioning the thing. Well, he was able to do that for another friend who had a guitar that was painted over, and sure enough, there was the uh, serial number underneath. This one had no serial number to be oh, found. But there are, you know, guys who can identify guitars by, you know, sure. numerous things: the pots, the neck, the tuners, you know, the head, truss rod, blah blah blah. We right. think it's a mid '70s uh, black Les Paul, and uh, and. When I got the guitar, of course, just being so excited to have this thing, I was playing it, and Neil has his setup with a P90 in the neck and a Firebird, a very right. high Firebird pickup in the in the bridge. And when I played the guitar, it felt the pickups felt very mismatched to me. And being a player, not a collector, I decided to take the, the neck pickup and put it in the case where I always have it in case I right. need to. And I put a Seymour Duncan filter tron 
Okay, yeah. In the neck position. And actually, it sounds really good, the combination of the two. And my friend who uh, looked at the output of this Firebird pickup said, it's the hottest Firebird pickup. Firebird pickup. Ever heard. In yeah, the history I mean, of man, right? Yeah, because <laughs> usually so, uh, Firebird neck pickups or bridge pickups are kind of wimpy, right? In comparison to, you know, I, I really don't know. But he said this thing was just so loud, you know, the output. So, look, man, I, I I feel very very fortunate, and I used to use the word lucky, but I think luck can be blind and just ha- happenstance. And fortune is something that one manifests through their tenacity, through their commitment, through their I'm gonna take on this commitment of being a guitar player and meeting people and getting my, you know, thing out there and through, you know, all these different uh, opportunities, you know, between Graham Nash giving me this amazing Dumble and and getting this guitar and Crosby's giving me a couple beautiful guitars. And I'm, I'm very fortunate guy that I've been around generous people. Um, Jackson Brown gave me an AC 30, you know, I, I, been acquiring some really beautiful things along the road and uh i used them in my studio and you know it's just part of my stuff i can dig it awesome stuff yeah well awesome well jeff this has been so much fun i'm so glad you took some time out for us and shot the breeze with us and told us these fantastic stories i'm sure we could we could talk for hours on end i know i know well i i certainly can as you can see (laughs) <laughs> that's fantastic no it's that's why we got you because we knew there would be stories forthcoming yeah well Greg, so what's I next to... for you? i mean obviously with this doggone pandemic we don't know what the heck's going on but so you're, yeah. you're going to do some more uh live streams i would imagine how could we find those if people are watching this yeah. would would like to well tune in? well pevar.com p-e-v-a-r.com is is a great place uh you know to find information of things that are going on and also videos and you know kind of cool information also records that i've produced and that i put out i have a beautiful record that i did with my wife inger Inger. and uh so that's that's a beautiful record that came came out recently and i'm working on another jeff pivar record um and yeah so you know we we shall can continue but while we're here greg i just want to tell you what a fan i am of, of your music and how you handle yourself as a uh as a guitar player who uh, has so much character and has such a grasp on not only musicality, but presenting uh, yourself in such a gregarious celebratory way. And oh, uh, thank you. yeah, man, it's, it's an honor to get a chance to know you and play music with you. And I look forward to the next opportunity and it's always an honor to, you know, uh, travel in the circles that you're traveling, man. Oh, likewise, my friend. It's always a yeah. pleasure hanging with you, and I'd look forward to seeing you again in person and doing yeah. some playing once this pestilence has somewhat subsided. I agree wholeheartedly. That was a, that was a mouthful. That was a mouthful. Yes. Once hey, the and, pestilence and make, has somewhat subsided. And make sure you send my regards to your wonderful family. Oh, you know? yeah. I will for sure do that. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, listen, my friend, thanks so much. Please say hello to Inger for me. It's always a pleasure seeing you guys, and uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. In the meantime, take care. And folks, check out Jeff Pivar. Check out his great records. And look online. There's some awesome footage of him wielding his axe with great aplomb. <laughs> you got it. Thank you, gentlemen. Have a uh, beautiful- Thank you, Jeff. Awesome. I knew it would be. Thank you. All right, let's talk soon. Take it easy. Hey.